morning. Good morning. I'm delighted that you are here. So I have some things that I want to tell you. I know you're shocked to hear that, but it's true. So um, today we are both looking forward into February, but also a little bit looking backward. We started taking orders last Sunday for our VLM t-shirts and hats. And maybe you didn't get your name on that list yet and would like to. So please know that those orders are open. We would love to have you join us in getting some VLM gear. It has the logo that was on the bulletin last Sunday, which is kind of like the stickers we passed out. If you didn't get a sticker, come see me. Our short sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve, I don't know how you do that. Um, our $18 long sleeve t-shirts are $20. Hats are 15. So uh, come see me, let Mary Lynn Fallon know. You can email me. Um, don't forget that. So if you can get a little more, I'll get you marked down. We do print pay now when you make the order. I do actually send the order for you until we have your money because we need to pay for it. All right. Let's do that. Super fun. Another thing. You all do that so well. If you did get your thumbprint or fingerprint, a fingerprint on our thumbprint tree last week at our party, it's in Daily Hall with those ink pads, and you can get your on there today. So I encourage you to do that if you didn't get a chance last week. So this morning. Bible study started. Yay, we've missed it. It stopped over a month and a half ago. So I hope that you're joining us on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. in Bailey Hall or on Zoom. Throughout the month of February, we have different folks leading us in conversation about some scriptures that tell us something about what it means to be church, which is a really important question, especially for us at this moment in history. So I hope that you will join us. Sunday mornings. Now, I also said we were looking ahead to the rest of February. Late in February, we are going to celebrate Week of Compassion, but I wanted to give you more than a week. So I'm going to toss out some coin boxes to somebody that wants one. Do you want one? I want one. All right. You don't have to catch it. Anybody else up here want a coin box? You all should know I'm a terrible thrower, so if you don't catch it, it's all done. All right, John. She wants one. All right. All right. If you don't catch it, it's entirely my fault. Coin box? Yeah, it's only if you want one. I only I only folded up 15 of them because you both want one. One's good. I, oh, do you want me to? I, I can back up and toss it to you. Underhanded. Oh, but see, under, it's worse underhanded. Who even, who even knows? It's totally my fault, yes? Okay, I'm getting better. Coin box? Oh, all right. She has one from last year. Coin box? All right. Just one? Yeah. Okay, see which one you can. Oh, good yeah. job, Vicky. All right. I see many hands. Do you, are you having a family competition? I feel like all the money comes from the same place, but what do I know? All right, okay. I'm throwing boxes. Would you like to catch one? Okay. All right, I gave away all of the ones. You will see they are a little less sturdy. They require tape this time. So if we need to make more, we can, but it took a long time to make those 15, so then I stopped. But you know that we will fill up those coin boxes. They will be part of our Week of Compassion offering for 2023. It is our goal again to raise $500. This is for our denominational, oh, so many words, Disaster Relief and Humanitarian Development Fund that does good work in your name, in Christ's name, all over the world, all around the year. So I hope that you will engage with this offering and this emphasis, and we'll see where we're at by the end of February. So those are all of my announcements. I have two birthdays that we don't actually have to sing about, but I do want to bring them to your attention. On Thursday, it will be Jason Cisneros Sr.'s birthday, and on Saturday, it will be our custodian Scott's birthday. So if you want to pop by during the week, if you're happy to be here, remember to tell Scott happy birthday. Some of you will see him when he gets here to clean up on his birthday after Welcome Saturday next weekend. So thank him especially.
especially for coming in to work on his birthday. And uh, we will help him know how grateful we are. Jesus teaches us before we come to worship God to reconcile ourselves one to another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to share those signs of peace. Stand with me now as you are able for our opening song, Salt and Light. us together, empower us to serve from this place in every direction. Let us worship God with humble thanksgiving and joy. Let us pray. God of grace, we are aware of being blessed and highly favored to join the gathering of your people today, celebrating and hungering for your gifts of love, light, and the wisdom from the Holy Spirit. God within us, grant us the light to open our eyes to your love and wisdom, that we may see the living God in each and every one, and thereby come to know and live out the promise of Christ in the world. May we be renewed by this morning of praise and worship for your service in this world, in the presence of your Holy Spirit, Amen. 
of this community and beyond. We do have a white carnation this morning. That is for Larry Knight and Nancy Knight's sister, Frida, who passed away this past Monday. Uh, the memorial service was yesterday up in Hanford, California. So this means that Larry and Nancy are the last two siblings. So we surround them with our care and sympathy in, in that new way of being in the world. God, in your mercy. We are lifting up prayers today for uh, Jason Cisneros Jr., um, who was at football camp in Las Vegas this weekend and got, had a serious injury yesterday and ended up in ER. Uh, they did scans, did not show any sign of obvious brain damage, but he is having concussion symptoms. So they discharged him, but he's out of school and obviously football for at least a week while they watch those symptoms and, and hopefully they will subside instead of needing to send him back to ER. So big prayers uh, for Jason and his entire family. Of course, Helene and Eliseo, his grandparents. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. We are praying with Eileen. Do we have any updates from Eileen? No, we, all right. Hopefully I know what we need to know. Eileen had her right knee replaced on Wednesday, went home on Thursday, started PT on Friday. Uh, as far as I'm aware, everything is going okay. Uh, despite the fact that there was a giant ice storm right before that all had to happen. So continued prayers for Eileen's recovery and all the ice to go away. God in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayers. We're continuing to pray with Mandy Doring, um, who got a cast on her 
really the bottom half of her left leg uh, this week. There is a, a fracture, a crack fracture, the cast is to make sure it doesn't get bigger. Um, this is from a couple of weeks ago now when a ladder fell on her foot. Ladder safety, my friends. Raise your hand if you pledge to be safe with ladders. All right, Jeremy, I want to see your hand up. All right. I know some of you who, who think you're friends with ladders. John, did you put your hand up? Ladder safety. He's shaking his head. God is watching you, John. I'm just saying. All right. So we're praying with Mandy that she may be an example to all of us and be healed soon from the fracture in her foot. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We're continuing to pray with Becky, um, who has started PT. Um, her appetite's coming back, which means she's able to gain more strength. Um, is there any update there? No. So last I had heard, the doctor said she might be able to go home what would, I guess, be this coming week, the end of this coming week. So uh, prayers, prayers for Becky's recovery. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, we are continuing to pray for Caitlin Yoder um, after uh, an accident with a supposedly foam arrow that wasn't all foam that hit her eye. Um, her vision is returning some, it is blurred. Um, you can see the color in her eye, which had been, I think, completely obscured. Um, but the pressure in her eye is still very high, which is a risk for uh, glaucoma, which would not normally happen in someone so young. Uh, so she's getting eye drops uh, to treat for that. So continue prayers for Caitlin Yoder and Grandma Katie, who is far away. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. We are in a broken, hurting world, my friends. We lift up prayers this day for the ongoing war in Ukraine, wildfires in Chile, the mosque bombing that killed over 100 people in Pakistan, Increased violence in the Holy Land, deadly cold weather in the Northeast, increasingly violent acts of anti-Semitism all across the U.S., and the epidemic of gun violence that we seem unable or unwilling to contain. We pray our prayers to God in desperate hope. God, in your mercy. We lift up our partners this week. Our Global Ministries prayer partner this coming week is Costa Rica. Our Pacific Southwest Regional Prayer Partner this week is Disciples Seminary Foundation in Fullerton, where, where Belva Brown Jordan um, serves as the interim or acting, something like that, executive director. They're looking for someone to take the permanent job, and it's not her, she says. Okay. So prayers for that whole process and Belva and the other staff. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Do we have any prayer requests in the chat box? No? What else can we lift up? today. Brenda? I got some results on my uh, PET scan and they were very good. Um, the tumor is grown a couple centimeters and <coughs> I have some activity in my liver and my uh, and the lymph node in my neck. It says level two, but I don't know what that means. I'll find that out on Wednesday, but I was very disappointed and Anyway, I don't know how it's going to affect my surgery, but we'll see what happens. Okay, okay. so surrounding Brenda with our prayers uh, at the results of a PET scan, <coughs> the opposite of what we wanted to hear. That tumor has grown just a bit and it showed activity in her liver and a lymph node as well. So surrounding Brenda with our care and, and God's presence. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Karen? I have a great joy. On yes. Friday night, uh, some of us were able to go see Helix High School's, I don't know, is it the whole performance department? Uh, anyway, drama and music and dance all put on the musical Rent, and Michelle is the musical director for that. These kids were incredible. It was such a professional production and so uplifting to just see what our young people can do. Um, so a joy that we have a school like Helix in our community and a director like Michelle here with us. Yes. Yes, what a wonderful, wonderful production they have put on. God with joyful hearts. Yeah. All right, the Floreses are watching you all, but nobody's <laughs> raising your hands. Okay, all right, let us move on in prayer. 
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for we know that you are with us through it all. There is so much that challenges us. There is so much that weighs us down, oh God, so much pain, so much hurting, so much violence. We pray, oh God, that you would renew our spirits this day, that you would restore our souls, that you would refresh our hearts and revive our faith. We pray this day, lifting up all those we have mentioned, those who are still cradled quietly in our hearts, those that we don't even know, God, but that we know there are so many out there who need your help and your hope, your strength and your delivery. We pray, oh God, for your liberation for all peoples. We pray this day for our community. We give you thanks for those who are bringing joy, those who are teaching and leading and protecting and guiding, those who are with our young people, those who serve our elders, oh God. We pray that you would be with all those who are struggling, God, those who are struggling to make ends meet, to support their families or themselves, we pray for those going through difficult times, oh God, those who are living without shelter, those who do not know where their next meal will come from. We pray, oh God, for your hope and your help. We pray that we might be vessels, oh God, of the light of that hope, the light of your love. We pray this day that you would help us to be your church, oh God. We pray for those you are preparing even now to join with us in this beloved community, O oh God, that we might help them find their way here by proclaiming your truth, your gospel, your good news, O oh God. We pray this day for our nation, for our leaders, that your humble wisdom, that your compassion and wisdom might guide them. We pray, O oh God, for our world, for places where violence seems to reign, for places, oh God, where people are hungry and hopeless, we pray, oh God, that you would pour out your mercy, your grace, your power, and your strength, your hope, oh God, we pray it. We pray this day for peace. We pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our first reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You can find it on page 4 in the New Testament section of the Red Bibles and the Chair Racks, if you would like to follow along. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under the foot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in their house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. May the Holy Spirit add blessing to this reading from the Gospel. Our second reading today is from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 1, verses 26. I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 26 through chapter 2, verse 5. My own little segmentation there. It's a little complicated writing it out. It is on page 166 in the New Testament section of the Bibles in the Chair Acts, 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 2, 5. And remember, is Paul talking to the Corinthians, not me talking to you, I promise. We'll see. Similarities. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. 
God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. May the Holy Spirit add blessing to this reading from the epistle. Will you pray with me and for me as we move into the word together? Holy God, bless the speaking and the hearing of these words that we might open our hearts to your wisdom and trust in your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Apparently, Jesus is going to get introduced during the Super Bowl next weekend. I know, I know, you're shocked that I know when the Super Bowl is, but... <laughs> Don't worry, it didn't stop us from scheduling an elders meeting. <laughs> but seriously, there's, there's going to be an ad aiming to rebrand Jesus during the game. It's part of a broader He Gets Us campaign that's been running ads for the past 10 months. When a friend posted about this upcoming ad on Facebook last week, the first thing it made me think of was the church near where I served in Alabama, whose voicemail greeting declared that they were a place dedicated to making Jesus famous. I never quite got that one either. There's nothing I recall in any of the Gospels implying that Jesus was interested in being famous. I think part of the problem that these and similar marketing campaigns are reacting to is that in some senses, Jesus is currently infamous rather than famous. Surveys have shown that a wide swath of Americans associate churches with hatred and intolerance rather than love and compassion. It seems we've had a plenty tall lampstand. The problem is that it wasn't the light of Christ that was shining out from those lamps. Now, it is highly unlikely that VLM is ever going to purchase ad time during the Super Bowl. We have better things to spend $20 million on should they come our way. If you want to talk about that later, we can meet after church. <laughs> that doesn't mean this isn't an issue we should think about. Indeed, during this anniversary year, one of our hopes is to spend time discerning who we are and how to share that more broadly so that the people who need to be part of this community can find their way here. As we do that, we need to keep in mind the lessons of both of our scripture passages today and the delicate balance between them. Jesus wants us to know that we are the light of the world. Jesus wants us to let our lights shine so that others may see our works and give glory to God. And I think it's only honest to admit that we have some trouble doing this. We were raised to be modest, unassuming, some of us deferential to a fault. We've watched other Christians be what we would call 
she. And we know deep in our souls, that's not what God wants from us. Our aversion to that sort of behavior, though, has overgrown its usefulness and made us keep our mouths shut when we shouldn't have. We haven't seen other models for shining our lights, so we've assumed that the rules about bushel baskets must have changed. We haven't figured out how to do it appropriately, so we've just given up trying. But if we want to bring light and hope and love into people's lives, Jesus is telling us that the bushel baskets are still not helping. We've got to find a way to share the good news we're living here together with those who haven't experienced it yet. Paul, on the other hand, is cautioning about the dangers of getting too caught up in delivering the message in ways that people find appealing. He knows that far too often among humans, the message gets swallowed up by the messenger. The charismatic leader, the catchy music, the endorphins of being in a high energy crowd, the noise of all that can drown out the quiet, humble call of the gospel. Our attempts to make Jesus appealing, popular, famous even, tend to turn him into something other than who he is. Now it may sound like I've spelled out a simple dichotomy here, but it's anything but simple. Balancing these two concerns is one of the biggest struggles the church has had over the centuries of its existence. And each denomination and each congregation is going to find its own place along the spectrum. I would argue that for churches like ours, the key is relationship. A Super Bowl ad is way beyond our budget, but that's not really a problem because a Super Bowl ad doesn't involve relationship. People are going to wander in our doors, not because of an ad campaign, but because someone who's already here, I'm looking at all of you, <laughs> has demonstrated that they care about that person. And that what happens here is the source and motivation of that care. Small church ministry invites us to shine our lights through the power of connection. But as Paul cautions, the first relationship we need to attend to in order to make this work is our own relationship with God. We may have talents and gifts and even wisdom, but unless we get ourselves out of the way, bringing someone in through the power of relationship will only bear fruit if they end up connecting to God and not just us. Human relationships are notoriously fragile, especially in these times of polarization and cultural division. If that's what someone's commitment relies on, it will always be in danger of crumbling. We need to be sure that the light we are sharing is the light of Christ, the light of God's love that transcends our own personalities and peculiarities. We can only ensure this <clears throat> remains the case if we stay in constant communion with God. It's why we return to worship each week. It's why we study scripture. It's why we pray prayers of confession, petition, prodding ourselves to admit just how needy we really are. We who pride ourselves on self-sufficiency. Is it ironic that Paul boasts of his weakness and lack of wisdom? Sure. Ironic, but necessary. This is real talk from someone who used to occupy a position of privilege. Paul had to set aside his own shininess 
in order to share the light of Christ. And he shared the story of that process with the church folks in Corinth because they too were surrounded by shiny things just as we are. If we are going to share the true light of Christ, the light of true wisdom with others, we need to continually seek it out, discern its presence for ourselves. We need to hone our skills of honesty and humble forthrightness so that they are able to withstand the power of our skills of denial and rationalization. We are gifted at explaining to ourselves why the thing we most want is obviously what God wants for us too, whether it matches up with gospel values or not. We are gifted at convincing ourselves that the easy way is the grace of God pouring into our lives, when in fact it may be our own fear directing us. This is why we come back every week. Not just to see one another and laugh and weep together, but to commune with the whole. The one who lifts us out of our everyday perspective so that we can see more clearly what is true and good and helpful instead of just what is shiny and appealing and undisturbing. Shining our lights is supposed to bring glory to God, not just people to sit beside us in church. If we do it well, it might do both, or it might not. Faithfulness does not require a lampstand the size of a Super Bowl ad. But however we do it, what Paul wants us to realize is that shining our own lights on our own power is not illumination that will last. We are vessels, not the source. We are weak and foolish, but also beloved and precious. And our weak and foolish world can know itself beloved and precious if we can reflect the light of God's love in ways that are authentic and true. And that will bring glory to God. Hallelujah. Our heavenly response this morning is number 595, Be Thou My Vision, verses 1 through 3. It is at this time that we invite forward anyone who wishes to join with this congregation by profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or by transfer of membership from another congregation. It is at this time that we are all invited to rededicate our hearts and our lives to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Will you stand with me as you are able and sing? <laughs> Thank you. 
Please be seated. Doing my own camera work too, sorry. <laughs> In scripture, we don't hear about it often, of people being called by God and them wondering, why the heck me? It happens occasionally. But even these great figures, you don't hear their wrestling, their conversation with their spouse or their trusted advisors or whoever else. When God has called them, why me? What do I have to offer? What's so great about me? What's so special about my gifts or talents compared to that guy or that person or my neighbor? Many of you are older than me. Um, and I say that not disparagingly, but often in life, um, I wonder who let me do this as an adult? Who let me have this job or buy this house or move here? Buy who, who is okay with all? Who is signing off on this? And it feels weird at times because I don't feel like an adult many times. I don't feel like I have the, the correct knowledge or wisdom or everything I need to know in order to make the right decision. I have what I, what I can get, but it feels weird at times. And yet, God calls all of us in any state, at any moment, at any time, whether we feel ready or not, whether we feel prepared, whether we think our light will shine bright enough for others to see and hear and listen. There are many moments of my life where people pay for a meal, especially in college, when I was a broke college student, and that, that has stayed with me until now. And I hope to bless those who I meet, who are younger than I in college, and pay for their meal, and listen to their situation, to pay it forward constantly and often. I think that's what God wants us to do. Whether we're ready, whether we know what the best next step is, to just give, to just be who God has called you to be, to give as much as you can, even if you don't feel like it's enough. Because God has called us to do this work. And there's no comparison needed when the God of all source and all being has provided. We give thanks, please, at the seal offerings. Mm -hmm.
please pray with me. Loving God of all, we give you thanks. Today we give you special thanks for this body of Christ in which we are so blessed. And we dedicate these offerings for the work of this congregation here and in the wider world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. You guys can't see what happens in the back, but sometimes I get to watch things. So, um, yes, not as omniscient as the one we are here to worship, and yet I'm looking the other direction. So, indeed, here we are. At the table of Christ who welcomes each of us just as we are, regardless of how much denial we have engaged in already this morning, regardless of what we rationalized on our way here, you are invited, you are beloved, you are precious. You are invited to this table to commune with God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, God, the one who walks among us, God, the spirit who binds us together in true community. You are invited to eat and drink and remember. You come to this table remembering that Jesus gathered with his friends at what was to be their last supper before everything changed. And he took the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this bread is my body. Broken. For you. Eat of it, all of you, and remember. And in a similar way, he took up the cup. And having given thanks, he poured it out for them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Pour it out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, and remember me. So we come to the table to eat and to drink and to remember. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we prepare to partake of this most enriching of all meals, we thank thee for the gift of thy son, Jesus Christ, and for his instituting this meal. And thank you also for the message of hope and salvation which he brought to us. Let us remember that message as we say the prayer which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts to come to the table by singing our communion hymn number 419, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly.
my friends, let us go walking in the light of God, walking in the light of God's truth, walking in the light of God's love, walking, carrying forth the true light of Christ, the light of the world. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.